So what we're going to do is we're here to expose it, let people tell their story, and let them, let everybody in the public see the horrors of the court system in Suffolk County, New York. Dr. Carlos Rivera, pediatrician, got divorced and ended up paying $15,000 a month to his ex. After paying $492,000 in four years, he still ended up having to go to jail for six months. Dr. Rivera has been forced into early retirement from his beloved profession due to finances and severe depression. He's been alienated from two of his children. He's been left with nothing. Yet, this isn't enough. His ex still wants him behind bars. Again, even his ex's boyfriend thinks this is wrong. Do I think you're getting the shaft? Yes, I do. So how is this happening? How is the system allowing this to go on? In this Long Island Backstory special report, we'll investigate who is to blame for destroying a productive member of society just for getting a divorce. Long Island Backstory. Long Island's news alternative to the Newsday Cablevision News Monopoly with Chief Correspondent Gary Jacobs. Hi, I'm Gary Jacobs. Welcome to another edition of Long Island Backstory where we're here at the Supreme Court in Suffolk County, New York, uh, here on Long Island. This is what I call, this is the epicenter of corruption. This is where all the problems start. Let me just take you for a walk and tell you how this whole system works. So one of the problems that I have is when you first get here, you're degraded and you're just treated like a piece of crap from the minute you get in here. The whole system is designed to be unfriendly towards litigants. And what I mean by that is today is a fairly nice day, although it's raining a little bit. But in the winter, when it could be 20 degrees outside, what they do is they tell everybody in the courthouse, the judge tells almost everybody to show up at 9 o'clock in the morning. So at 9 o'clock in the morning, everybody gets here, and you walk up, you have the family court to the left-hand side over here, and this is a Supreme Court building. Everybody comes up here to the entrance of this ominous brick building. Half the time, this line is 100 people long standing out here. Now, you're forced to stand out here. Most people are showing up. They're dressed up. They have their papers. They have their books. Some people have kids with them. And sometimes you can end up standing out here for 45 minutes in the freezing cold. There's absolutely no reason for it. There's no reason why they can't stagger it and have some people come at 9, some people come at 10. They don't. They have two times. They have 9 o'clock and 2 o'clock. This is done on purpose because what they do is, remember, most people are paying for an attorney. So they're paying for an attorney, two, three, four, five hundred dollars $500 an hour, to stand around. Now you got two people doing that. And sometimes you have a law guardian too. So of course the law guardians, they, they don't complain. The law guardian, they're more than happy. They're getting paid. The lawyers are getting paid. And the funny thing is, I would say more than half the time, the judges don't even show up till 10 o'clock. So here we go. We go into the building with the security. As you see, there's already a line of people over there. Okay, so uh, we made it up through security. We're on to the second floor. You know, this, as I was saying earlier, the whole thing is about intimidation. So we make it through security. They tell us we can't film in the security area, which is fine. Then, then the court officer tells us, look, you have to wait over here. We're going to have somebody escort you. I've been here plenty of times. I don't need an escort to come up to this place. But they said they're going to give us an escort, which is interesting because I see plenty of news people here. They don't have escorts. What is it that they're so worried about us exposing that they need an export, uh, an, an escort, so they can control it. So we're here on the second floor, and actually I see uh, Dr. Carlos Rivera, who we're here to cover today, sitting over here. So let's go over to uh, Dr. Rivera. Hi, Dr. Rivera, Gary Jacobs from Long Island Backstory. Hi, how are you? So we're, we're here today for a case. From what do you understand? I understand that you were served with more papers uh, to incarcerate you. Um, unfortunately, after I was forced into early retirement, my, um, about a week or two later, my ex served me with some paperwork to come back to court seeking incarceration for a willful contempt to pay child support. Um, the hard part is, you know, my career was destroyed and I'm still facing persecution. 
I find it's like a, a terribly stressful ordeal. It's been going on for eight years. It never ends, and I'm not sure how much more the system wants to beat me down at this point. Yeah, I mean, I find it interesting. You, they already put you in jail for six months. You know, you had a guy who was, who was doing well. You had a big practice, you know, a loving father. And, you know, from what I see in the papers and, and us covering the case, you know, your, your ex-wife and her new boyfriend, Sean, are a big part of the problems. No, no doubt about it. They can stop this at any point. But you know what? They have accomplices in this. And the accomplices are the, are the courts because they're allowing it to happen. Instead of throwing it out and saying, you know, enough, what more do they want from you? They, they, they ruined your, they destroyed your life. I mean, I don't think I'm overstating it. They destroyed your life. They destroyed your relationship with three, with three of, your, of your children, the work, two, 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 two of your children, work, working on, on, on the other two. They destroyed your career. They created this situation. Now they're, now, they're asking for, now they're asking for the court to come in again. What more do they want? The hard part is that losing the career was stressful, and I, that's something I could move past it's the the children losing uh, two of my children to alienation having the other the next two threatened because they reside with their mother I, I never thought that anybody be um, capable of such cruelty and it saddens me that I thought at some point her family would stop her and say enough is enough but uh, unfortunately I walked past one family member who was uh, giving me you know, dirty looks and stares on the way in and it just saddens me I, I think that how much can you do to a person and the career and money is one thing, but uh, my children are another. And I, I pray that this ends one day soon because it's, it's really become difficult. I mean, what, what I find unbelievable is they turned you into the bad guy. You're the victim. Uh, you are the victim. You wanted to be divorced, move on. You were willing to pay plenty of money. You know, you even your wife had custody, or your ex-wife. You, you let her have custody. You had your career. Well, you know, it's, they're turning you into the bad guy that you spent six months in jail. For people watching this, you've already spent six months in prison. Yeah, it's it's, it's interesting because um, you know I used to have a good relationship with professional colleagues, and everyone keeps a distance, a pretty cold distance from me now. And after this point, I don't hear from anybody at all. You know, no one to say, "Hey, what happened?" So I'm pretty isolated. And you know, if it wasn't for my children, I probably would relocate. It's been, it's been difficult. So what we're going to do is so now you have a court appearance today. Uh, I think it's for 9.30 in the morning uh, up on the sixth floor with Judge Cheryl Joseph, who we don't know. We have at the show, we haven't had any experience with her. And we're just hopeful that she'll do the right thing, which is to just let you go on with your life. Don't let enough of the destruction end it. You know, my feeling being experienced with the courts is they're going to adjourn it because that's the name of the game. Make this drag on and drag on and, and to some extent hope that maybe you kill yourself hope that something horrible happens, they don't have to deal with it. Or you just give up, or you have no money, so you're done. I, uh, I, unfortunately, I've had bad experiences in the past with uh, Judge Luft and Ju Judge Lenore. I was happy to see a different judge this time around. I have a lot of hope that in this case, uh, Judge Joseph will finally be able to straighten this out because it's, you know, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm, well, you know, you're, 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 you're an optimistic type of guy, but you know, the problem is where we are, the place is run by the Chief Judge Randall Henricks, who's corrupt himself. If you got the guy at the top, and you're not saying it, you probably don't even know him. I'm telling you, the man is corrupt. This guy right here is the guy who keeps people from going up to see. The security officer sitting at the desk. You can't even go up to see the Chief Judge. What kind of place is this? You can go up and say, look, there's a problem with corruption. They won't let you see them. When the Chief Judge of the court himself, Judge Randall Henricks, is corrupt, everybody under him falls into line and they can do whatever they want. And that's really what, what the problem is here. That starts at the top. Now we have our district attorney being investigated for corruption, the chief of corruption, McFarland, being investigated for corruption, our chief of police in jail for corruption, and there's many more judges. I promise everybody, we're in June of 2016. There are more judges that are going to go down because now people are starting to look at it. And I'm also saying right now, Judge Henricks, who is corrupt, is going to go down too. Because a lot of people know what he did, and he covered up a lot of corruption in this system. And as I said, this is the epicenter of corruption. This is where you should go for help and for justice. Could be furthest from the truth. You don't get any justice in this place. So, Carlos, let's go up to the sixth floor. Here we are. Well, the elevator is going up. It should be good. It should be going down because that's where hell is. Okay. 
So it seems like uh, Carlos's uh, ex-wife uh, doesn't want to be on camera. We'll get them when they come in the courtroom. Um, I always think one of the ironies of this place is that when you're sitting up here and you look out the you look out the window and you see this beautiful uh, beautiful pond, probably one of the nicest views here. Uh, on Long Island, and you're in one of the worst places. The white building that you see off to the side over there, that's the federal courthouse. You know, one of the disturbing things is though, you look at that building, it's just filled with marble and, and wood, and it's, it's a beautiful building, but really it's only about half occupied, so the money that's wasted in this place is just, number one, that's unbelievable, but number two, just the amount of money that's spent with this system, when people say, why do people keep coming back to court and you know, why don't they move the cases through? They can't, they have to keep it going because this is where the money's at. There's just so much, so much money. Just think about these two huge buildings that are here, the hundreds of people that are working here. You know, it's just, it's just unbelievable. We're gonna go into the courtroom. Catherine, you want to comment? You're saying that Carlos is a fraud. Would you like to comment on why you're saying he's a fraud? Excuse me, why are you pushing me? I'm not pushing. I'm walking. Well, he stopped. You're stepping on me. Stop. Just walk. You know what? You don't push me out of the way. We're, we're asking some questions. You, you, made some, you made some claims that you said you agreed with Carlos that you couldn't afford to pay the order, yet you're still here in court to try to get him incarcerated. Wouldn't you like to comment about what kind of fraud he is? Either one of you. Catherine, would you like to comment about all the, all the statements you make about him being a fraud? Why are you here to try to incarcerate him? And why do you try to intimidate him? Would you like to comment on that? You're supposed to be a police officer? You're turning a loving father against his children. Would you like to comment on that? You know, as everybody could see when we were going down the hallway and trying to get uh, Catherine Cartwright, get a comment from her, you know, she just was trying to run away and hide, which is interesting. Why isn't she proud? She should be proud of what she did. She wanted to get him incarcerated. She had him put in jail for six months. Now she's here trying to get him again. Why, why is she hiding from the camera? Why doesn't she make a statement? She's on posting on social media that Dr. Vera is a fraud. She had her opportunity to tell everybody why he's a fraud. Yet what'd she do? She ran away. She ran away from the camera. She had every opportunity to state her piece. And I'll say again on the camera, if she wants to come on the show and make a comment, well, we're more than happy to have her go on there. But you know who the one who's a fraud? Catherine Cartwright. She's a child abuser. She's a parental alienator. That's all she is. And now she's trying to destroy her ex-husband, Dr. Carlos Rivera. Okay, so we just came out of the court with uh, Judge Cheryl Joseph, and you know, when we started off, Dr. Rivera said he's giving her the better for the doubt. As we can see, this woman is just like all the other ones. This judge, a nasty, nasty, inconsiderate woman. In fact, she didn't even follow the rules of the court. You have Carlos's ex-wife, Catherine Cartwright, files a petition in court, and what does the judge do? She demands that Carlos Rivera's lawyer gives her all the proof, the burden of proof is not on Dr. Vera. The burden of proof is on the person who's trying to incarcerate him. And this judge was nasty, disrespectful. Meanwhile, uh, Dr. Rivera's lawyer, lawyer uh, Judy Powell, was making an argument. This lawyer did not want to hear it. She kept demanding that Carlos's lawyer give papers to prove. It, the burden is not on the defendant. The burden is on the plaintiff, in this case, Catherine Cartwright. She should have been presenting it, but this judge just trampled all over the rights of Dr. Rivera. In fact, she, told, she tricked him and said, if you'd like to get another time, because she didn't give his attorney enough time to file a motion, an attorney who's doing it pro bono, this is given all the time, more than 30 days. Yet what she does, she said, nope, I'm not giving you the two months. I'm giving you 30 days, and if you want Dr. Rivera, you can get another lawyer, which is basically trying to get him to deny using Ms. Powell, and tells her to sit down and leaves him up there. Dr. Rivera is going through depression. He's, he's facing incarceration, and the judge is starting to drill him and put him on the spot. It's not right. The judge was disrespectful, and quite honestly, she's railroading him. Now we have uh, Dr. Rivera's attorney who represented him today, uh, Judy Powell. Uh, welcome. Hi. 
Tell us what, what, what went on here today. I was asking for time. I, as you know, I've been paid $5, a total of $5 on this case. I was asking the judge for sufficient time to prepare my responding papers, and Carlos is being denied an attorney of his choosing. He, they may or may not appoint an attorney. I would like to have time to put in these papers and put in good papers. I don't want to be rushed. I want him to do them properly. You know, June is coming. I do have a child. My child is going to be out of school. I do have a vacation planned. The day she picks, I actually have to be in Nassau County Supreme Court. Well, uh, June 27th, I have uh, court in Nassau at 9.30 in the morning. I cannot be here. I mean, so you, you've been practicing a long time on Long Island, and attorneys ask for adjournments all the time, especially in the summer, they get it. Is, is this uncommon? This wasn't even really an adjournment. This was a, a time for me to put in an emotion, so I guess it wasn't an adjournment. But I, certainly there's no problem. I've never, I, lawyers walk around Suffolk County showing up six hours late for court, showing up three hours late for court. I sit here since 9.30 waiting for them. The one time I said, Judge, I need time. I am working on this case, well, virtually pro bono. I got, like I said, paid $5 to represent him. I need time to put in to do a proper, I mean, like she said, the man is facing six months in jail. It's almost, it really is a criminal sanction, and she's telling his attorney, you don't have time to do a, a proper representation of him. Yeah, and from what I heard in there, it almost seems like she was trying to get him not to use you because you were too busy. She was basically telling me that. She was telling me I could not represent him, and Mr. Rivera could not use an attorney of his own choosing when he's facing six months in jail. Now, the, the feeling that I got was that the judge was not being fair from day one. And what I mean by that is Mrs. Cartwright, his ex-wife, brought this petition. Shouldn't this burden have been on her? She was asking you, show me this, show me that, in a nasty way. But shouldn't the burden have been on the person who was bringing the case to the court? I was actually very surprised, first of all, when the judge said she did not have the rest of the documents with her moving papers, I asked Ms. Cartwright if she had included them because she's required to file the motion with all the exhibits with the court. I also mentioned to the judge that um, it was not on her moving papers, that there had been a prior application for this exact same relief, and the judge blew that blew off that argument, so there were at least two defects in her moving papers, which didn't seem to matter, and then she's telling me, get everything together, and I hand her uh, what was attached to my moving papers, which wasn't even the whole judgment. Then she says, well, we're going to uh, uh, do this for second call. I ha she just didn't give me a moment to get them out of my briefcase. I'm standing there. It's not like I'm sitting at a table where I could spread everything out. I'm, I'm reaching down. I'm trying to get the things. I'm as organized as I could possibly be. And she's, you're handing me, you're showing me. Well, I, does she expect me to go over? I'm handing them. I'm showing them. The court officer can take them and walk them up there. I can't do that. You, well, how do you expect me to read that from there? Well, really? Well, how do you expect me to get right. them to you? So it was, it, it was unfortunate that the whole uh, court session just went totally. I mean, from, my, from my perspective, from the second you got up to the bench, he was treated with disrespect, unfair, and the judge was just against him. Didn't come in with an open mind. She was nasty to you, nasty to Dr. Vera. She doesn't know the facts yet, yet she was nasty, not affording the time. That's the feeling that I got, is that, you know what? His ex-wife brought the petition. She should have been the one making the arguments and to, to force you to pull out the, and if you know what, if it's not there, too bad, it gets rejected, and you should have more time to look at everything. Who knows, who knows if what's in your file was the same as what he gave Carlos and the same as what was served in the court? I literally just got the file from Carlos. He signed the retainer this morning while we were at court. I did not have a whole bunch of time to review all the, um, his moving papers uh, that the wife sent to the court. Obviously, they were defective. I mentioned two defects. It didn't matter. We were... For some reason, all the cards were stacked against him. All they keep reading is Dr. Rivera, Dr. Rivera, Dr. Rivera, Dr. Rivera. Dr. Rivera is the doctor who would go to homes of autistic children in the middle of the night to make house calls because these children did not have an, were, were terrified to go to doc, you know, to go to doctor. He was a good pediatrician. Not only did he lose his practice, not only did he lose his livelihood, these children lost their doctor, and that is, that's disgraceful. That's absolutely disgraceful. We tried to work with her, and Ms. Rivera's, uh, Ms. Cartwright just doesn't want to work with us, which we tried everything. We want to get him back. He's still relatively young. He could still get back. We would love to do that. She won't work with us. I mean, I would love all these little children to have their pediatrician. They loved, they loved him. 
Well, I mean, obviously, it's clear that she doesn't care about her children. She doesn't care about the children of all the people that practice, and she doesn't care about the father of her children. And the problem, as I see it, is now she has the accomplice, as we saw on the tape, which, which is her new boyfriend, who, although we have him on tape basically agreeing that Dr. Vera got screwed, got a bad deal, yet he's still here today trying to bully him as he tried to do to us, trying to get him incarcerated. This man was a police officer. From what I understand, 14 years that he served as a police officer. You know, we did a little bit of research, 14 years. I'd like to get a comment on him, why he's not on the bench, why he's, why he's not a police officer anymore. You know what, the guy, in my opinion, he's got problems, and he's, and he's a part, being part of this child abuse of his children, and he's abusing and harassing Dr. Rivera. Well, you know, it comes down to, in the end, no matter how much we all stand here as attorneys and judges and whatever else we're doing in this courthouse, it comes down to the end of the story is that the children are being hurt. And that's really the only reason I took Carlos's case was because before I even decided to take his case, who is this man? I started looking him up and I started reading about these parents who saying, my, ch my autistic child doesn't have their doctor anymore. And I started saying, wow, that's, that's the problem. We're hurting the children. I didn't take this case because I'm for men's rights or father's rights or anything else other than the children. Well, you know you didn't take it for the money. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, it's definitely a loss, but it's, I, I, I have to do something for the children. You know, and that's the reason that we started covering the cases during the week. It's difficult for us to all come out here and try to cover it and get harassed by the courts. Actually, the courts themselves giving us a hard time. But because so many people that were parents of his patients reached out to Long Island Baxter and said, you got to cover this. We, we can't lose this guy. And that's what fell on, on deaf ears. Because you know what? Everybody always says what the judges and the courts are supposed to do, what's in the best interest of the children. How is destroying this man? Forget about all his patients. That's not, they're not in front of the court. But his own children. How is trying to incarcerate this man in the best interest of his children? Can you explain that? I don't understand that. I'm not saying he deserves any special privileges because he's a doctor. But, you know, we, I know that the children are being alienated from him now, his own children. And it, it doesn't serve any purpose. There has to be another way. There has to be a way that judges have to look and say, where's the common sense in all this? We, we, one of the few private practice pediatricians in all of Suffolk County that took Medicaid, took Medicaid. People, children all lost that. They lost that privilege of going to that doctor. And now his own children are going to be hurt even more. And it's just, I, I just can't find the common sense. And, you know, all the legal arguments, all the judicialness, all that I could look up statutes, I could look up case law, I could write papers from here, you know, this high. But, but I'm still looking for the common sense in this, which I don't see. No, I, you know, this is just another example of just another judge who's got her mind made up before we got in there. In my opinion, it looks like she's spoken to other people and just is trying to take this bad situation and just keep perpetuating that he's a bad guy. Dr. Vera is a victim. Let's not forget, from day one, he was not, not paying child support. He was paying almost 10000 a month in child support when he was incarcerated. So let's not lose sight of this. I mean, it looks good to say, oh, he's a deadbeat dad. He needs to go to jail. He was paying around $10,000 a month. Now, when she had him put in jail, she went on social services. So how is she surviving now on social services? But she needed 10000 It's child support. It's not let's get rich and let's take these little money bags support. Again, where is the sense in that if the taxpayers, you and I, who are paying taxes, are picking up the tab for social services and we're picking up the tab for putting him in jail, where's the, where, where's the financial benefit to us, the taxpayers, who are innocent in this? I mean, come on. Do something. Do the right thing. Yeah, well, we we'll hope this judge does the right thing, but from what I saw, this little act that she put on today, she wasn't even pre pretending that she's going to do the right thing and have an open mind. As she said, it's very serious. She's facing six months in jail. Somebody's facing six months in jail. You don't give them the benefit when their attorney is saying, I have cases and I have a vacation plan. Let's give them time so that we're 100% sure that his rights are preserved. That didn't happen. No, I, I'm very disappointed in that. I do want to continue representing him. I do not want to walk away. I do have to be in another court on the same day, uh, previous matter pending in Nassau County. So I cannot be here on uh, June 27th. And I do need time. I do have other cases. I do have other things to produce. And this is... We're talking about possible six months of incarceration. I don't want to put in sloppy papers. I want to put in good papers. Well, and Judy Powell, thank you very much for everything you do. Judy Powell, attorney from, uh, from Jericho, New York, and again, one of the good ones. Yeah, it just, we just want to show here the, the, the retainer agreement where uh, Judy Powell is representing Dr. Vera 
for uh, for five dollars. So you know the, the judge should be happy that at least somebody's willing to represent him. Basically, pro bono. In fact, the five dollars was borrowed. It wasn't even hit five dollars. So. You know, the, the fact that somebody's representing him, the judge should at least bend over backwards. You know, common sense is that the guy, you know, that she has other client pay, paying clients that she needs to represent. So, you know, the, the fact that she got somebody pro se and she's not giving them any time, she's not affording him time that she affords to, to many other people, especially when he, when he faces incarceration, is really, is really disgusting. Uh, Gary Jacobs, Long Island Backstory. Again, another sad story here at Suffolk County Supreme Court. We've just done way, way, way too many of these stories of lives being destroyed in this building. When is it going to end? When is somebody going to come in and stop the corruption? All I can say is people who are watching this, do your part. I know it's hard to take off from work and come to protests and court watch for people, but share this video. Get it out there. Like the Long Island Backstory page. Let everybody know that they can't hide anymore because people are going to be here. People are going to be covering it. The press is here. There's a lot of, uh, you know, not, not mainstream media anymore. There's uh, WLINY Radio, which covers a lot of this. You have uh, Jay Oliver and his morning show who covers a lot of non-traditional uh, stories. But this needs to be exposed. Sunlight is the best disinfectant. And you know what? They've, they've hid behind these doors for way, way too long. And it's got to stop. It's got to stop now. Do your part. Share the video. Make comments. If you have the time, send a letter. Send a, send a letter to the district attorney's office about the corruption that goes on here. And if you have a story to tell, come to us. If you have Judge Joseph, come tell us the story. Because what we find is that when we do a story on one judge, it's not the only case. There's many people, and they all have the same, the same stories about an abusive judge. We had a Judge Marion McNulty who got away with it for years. And Judge Hinrichs covered up for her. She finally, they let her step down, which is the old trick of the courthouse. But if you have a judge that abused you and violated your rights, please send us an email, longislandbackstory at gmail.com. Send us a message through Facebook. Reach out to, to our producer. And again, a special shout out to our producer and cameraman, uh, Andrew Herzman, who does an unbelievable job chasing everybody down the hallway here today, getting up early to be here. And uh, this show would not be possible without the production that he does and the endless hours that he puts in for very little money. We don't have uh, we don't have a big staff here at Long Island Backstory, you know, sound sound man producers, but but Andy really does a bulk of the work. And even though he's behind the camera, uh, give him a lot of credit. And thank you to uh, attorney Judith Powell of Jericho for representing Dr. Rivera so vigorously and not letting this abusive judge shut shut her up in court when that's all she wanted to do. You know, as we're standing here, it struck me, I'm just thinking about all, all the rights of Dr. Vera that were violated by Judge Joseph. You know, another thing, and Judge Joseph, we know you're going to watch this show. You violated Dr. Vera's rights because he's entitled to have an attorney. He had a retainer agreement signed, and she was standing there representing Dr. Vera in court. Yet she told the attorney to go sit down and ask Dr. Vera if he'd like to get another attorney and explain to him how serious it was. But guess what? He went in with an attorney, and she was not supposed to talk to him without the attorney that was retained standing by Dr. Rivera's side. She didn't care. She violated his right. She trampled all over it. Judge Joseph, you be careful too, because guess what? Just like we went after Judge McNulty, and I'm going after Judge Henricks, and Law Guardian Kathy Small, and Aletha Fields, who's just a nasty, biased woman, we're going to come after you too, Judge. We're going to come after you. Be careful. Okay, so today, obviously, we did a lot of uh, bashing and just exposing... The, the nastiness and the corruption of the system's broken, but a Long Island backstory, we're fair. So I do want to give a shout out to some people who actually did the did the right thing today. Uh, Mary Porter, who works in Judge Hemrick's office, uh, responded to our email requesting that we uh, shoot at the courthouse. Uh, was very polite. Uh, did tell everybody that we were coming. Uh, the court officers, who a lot of times are not so friendly, especially in Nassau County Family Court, but I will say uh, today the court officers here in Central Islip, uh, they couldn't have been uh, better. They were more respectful. Uh, they helped us through the system. Uh, in fact, going down the hallway, uh, they, they, they watched us come through and allowed us to exercise our, uh, our right to freedom, freedom of the press and uh, the building being open. So when somebody does something right, I 
do, I do think we need to give them credit. So again, thank you to the court officers who did the did the right thing today, allowed us to cover this case and and expose it. And thank you to Miss Porter, uh, the chief judge's office, for following up and letting everybody know that we would be here today to cover the uh, cover the story of Dr. Rivera. <laughs>